Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. It, in other words, it's, it's the right thing to do. This past summer, we attended the biennial convocation of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries in Atlantic City, New Jersey. That's right, church folk in Atlantic City. And on the last day of the convocation, the bishops and leaders held a sunrise service of baptism in the Atlantic Ocean. In the morning dawn, clouded in fog and mist on an empty beach, the candidates for baptism in their white robes emerged into view looking like angels. They looked like heavenly beings living out some divine purpose and we were witness to it. People I had seen all week seemed to transform before my very eyes now that they were demonstrating their intention to be baptized. And the Spirit of God hovered over the beach, over the waters, and over the entire congregation, even before one word of liturgy was even uttered. Now, there is no way to know what kind of change these newly baptized faithful experience, but I wonder if they understood that what they were doing was being obedient obedient to a call, that what they were doing was proper to fulfill all righteousness, that they were following the example Jesus set for us long before we ever responded to the call. And that, I think, is the invitation that we are given by the evangelist of Matthew, to reflect upon what is the right thing to do in response to God's prompting? Jesus' baptism by John brings into focus his identity and mission in a dramatic way. When John the Baptist was preaching and offering a baptism for repentance of sin, he prophesied that one who was coming, more powerful than he was, who would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, John did so with the full knowledge of Isaiah's prophecy that God would put God's spirit on the true servant and sovereign of God. You see, John could see that Jesus was the true servant and sovereign anointed by God. So when, when Jesus comes to John to be baptized, John hesitated. He didn't just seek to get out of baptizing Jesus, but he also recognized to whom he was speaking. You are the anointing. Well, why do you come to me to be baptized? And so John comes before Jesus with humility and a repentant heart and acknowledges that I am the one who should be baptized by you. And so it raises the question, why would the one revealed as the anointed one, come to John, a messenger who himself needs to repent and confess and be baptized. Why? Why indeed? And Jesus' response and the first words Jesus utters in the Gospel of Matthew are a powerful witness. We've said it several times, and it's, it is a powerful witness to what God is up to and what is required of us. Jesus' response is, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all right. In other words, it's the right thing to do. Oh, I know he wants something more dramatic. Jesus, Jesus is, is the anointed one. John knows it and said, I, can't, I shouldn't baptize you. You should baptize me. And Jesus' response is what? It's the right thing to do. 
It's the right thing to do. No matter what John thought, no matter what questions he had, everything about this moment, this encounter between John and Jesus at the waters of baptism is about what God is doing. It's not about, John, what you think you ought to do. It's not about what you think I ought to do. Right now, it is the right thing to do. And why is it the right thing to do? Because it's what God is doing. This is what baptism is about. It's about what God is up to. And so Jesus does not claim equality with God to avoid baptism. Jesus does not assume his own identity right now. Jesus doesn't say, oh, I'm God's son, therefore you're right. Let me baptize you. No, Jesus says, yes, Lord, I'll be baptized. Oh, see, you didn't clap at that. Jesus could have claimed equality with God and said, I am the anointed one. I am the promised one. But what Jesus' response was, yes, Lord, I'll be baptized. He said, yes. No quibbling with John. No theological debate. Oh, you want to get into a theory? We almost got one this morning. What about children being baptized? Oh, it's always a debate. Oh, what, 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 should I get baptized again? Or is this, does this last all my life? Or should we do it this way? What words should we utter in the baptism? What, no, Jesus said yes. Yes. Let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Let's do it. Because God has already done it. And coming to be baptized by John, Jesus is being obedient to God's will and call. In the rite of baptism, both John and Jesus are being faithful to God's covenant with creation to save us and to do justice. God has already determined to save us. God has already determined to be here. The, the kingdom of heaven has already been ushered in. Therefore, our response should be what? Yes. Yes. And if there was any doubt about what they were doing or the appropriateness of John baptizing Jesus, it was put to rest when Jesus came up out of the water. The heavens opened up and the spirit descends like a dove on him. God reveals publicly who Jesus is. We are given the definitive epiphany, the definitive appearing, the definitive seeing, the revelation of God in the person of Jesus, in the very presence and words of God. This is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, we saw it earlier. The angel told Joseph who Jesus was. The wise men followed a star that stood over the promised one and they, they worshiped him, but God confirms it all. Oh, you looking like you don't know what I'm talking about. God confirmed it all. And in the public act of baptism, God named, knows, celebrated, and empowered Jesus, the one. And all because he said, yes. He said, yes. In faithful obedience, in unwavering trust in God, Jesus is baptized. And he is named, he is known, he is celebrated, and he is empowered. Now it's just, it's just, it's, it's about confirmation. Justice is already done. Salvation is on the rise. The kingdom of heaven is here. And God confirms it. Now it's just a matter of us doing what is proper to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus models for us what it means to embrace our identities and our mission in God's saving work through the public act of baptism. You see, I keep saying public. I hope you notice that. I keep saying public. It's everybody can see it. Everybody knows. In the public act of baptism, we publicly declare our repentance. 
We publicly confess our sin. We publicly decide to turn to God. We say, I'm choosing this day to be with God. And then when we do that, here's what happens. We are named. We are known. We're celebrated. We're empowered. That's, let, 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 me, let, me, let me put it out this way. During the height of, 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 of segregation, during, during the, the time when violence and hate was, was a matter of culture and a matter of life, black folk went to church and no matter what you called them, no matter what people said about them, no matter what, what names they were called, they knew something, they were baptized. They were named, they were known, they were celebrated, they were empowered by a God that didn't, didn't, didn't trade in the business of hate and segregation. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me bring it very clear. When we came into this place, when, when this church was founded and, and people said that LGBTQ people couldn't be a part of God's body, there were people who had been baptized and they came in here and no matter what was said about them, no matter how the world mistreated them, no matter what churches did to reject them, they knew that they were named, known, celebrated, and empowered. That's baptism. That's what happens when we say yes to God. Oh, this powerful story of Jesus' baptism about God's revelation in the rite of baptism has gotten at best muddled and at worst lost. I get the feeling that we are experiencing what some sociologists call narrative collapse in the story of what God is doing in the world. You heard me say it before, everybody wants to debate the theology of baptism. Everybody wants to talk about what it means. Every, every denomination and every tradition has a different way of doing it. Oh, people wanna argue about whether or not I could be fully submerged, or how about sprinkling? Everybody wants to talk about all the things that goes with it. And, and, I, and by the way, I can join in all those debates. I can read all about what the theologians of old have said about it. And the church itself over the years has gotten so caught up in this theological debate about who baptizes whom. And where should it take place? How should it take place? Oh, it's not good if you're not in a lake. But we have lost the story of God's intention to see justice done and how we are supposed to participate in that work. Our encounter with God in the waters of baptism is a sign that we already have some measure of faith in what God is doing. Our repentance, our confession of sin, our public decision to be a part of God's body is all about us saying, hey, God is up to something and to be baptized is just the right thing to do. But what has happened to that revelation in our lives? Some people have, have, have gotten it confused. Some people have embraced the identity that comes with our baptism, but they've forgotten the mission that's required of baptized folk. Some people have taken on the mission with zeal, but have lost what it means to be an obedient servant to God. I got baptized when I was 12 years old. And I remember for at least a year after that wonder, it was a wonderful thing. I had my white robe and, and in, in Church of God in Christ, we go in the pool, behind the pulpit. And I got dunked into the water. And when I, when I, when I came up for about a year, all of my, my nieces and nephews and cousins and friends, anytime something didn't seem quite right, you baptized. <laughs> because they understood 
what my life was supposed to be like, that the revelation that comes with being in the waters of baptism should mean, that, should mean something for my life. And what has that revelation been like in our lives? I pray that we see our baptism that our baptisms are the fulfillment of what God aims to do in the world. God aims to do justice, to save us. And the question is, how are we going to participate? The epiphany, the seeing, the appearing of God in the rite of baptism is an invitation to see, to perceive, and know and then to do what is proper to fulfill all righteousness, to do what is right given that God is acting. When we went to those waters of baptism, we were named, we were known, we were celebrated and empowered, and no matter what they say about us, that's who we are, that's who and whose we are. And I know sometimes we forget. I know, I know uh, it's hard to see ourselves as God sees us, even after we have repented, even after we've confessed our sins and turned to God. Then we've gone through those waters of baptism. We have been told too many times that we're not good enough, we're not pure enough, we're not smart enough, we're not righteous enough, we don't have it right down. And the world categorizes us, you're this or you're that, you are a voter, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you are gay, you're straight you all these things they name you but of all those categories you get put in and once you put yourself in when you get baptized you are named known celebrated empowered by God it is the right thing to do and so my invitation to you is to remember your baptism. That when you were obedient to God's call to repent and confess and be baptized, that you were taking your stand, that you were letting the world know that you've joined the way of Jesus Christ. I pray that we remember our baptism, remember who and whose we are, such that we never forget what God is up to and what role we can play in what God is doing. Baptism is a public indication of what God is up to. God saves, God delivers, justice is done. And if that is the case, if all that is true and you know it to be true, let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness, amen.